CFL on CBC. Brought to you by Subway Restaurants. Subway. Eat fresh. And by Dodge and your Dodge retailers. Grab life by the horn. Welcome back to Sky Dome as we get set for the second half of the Eastern semifinal between the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Toronto Argos. There's the score. Danny McManus has told us on a few occasions this is the toughest defense he faces. And uh, nothing changed in that first half. No, I, I think they did a couple of things. One is they fooled him into a couple of coverages where they looked like they were playing man, and then he dropped into a zone and he thought, you know, he could throw to a certain area. And they were there, and he got one intercepted on a bad throw by him, a bad decision when he threw the ball to no one except for Kevin Ivan of the Argos. But it's a situation where Danny Mack has really got to get back there, and hopefully Barisi has given him a better game plan for the second half. Let's check the first half numbers. Well, I mean, obviously, if you look at the first downs, you wouldn't think much of it. It's a defensive game so far. One turnover of pace, the punts, huge punts. And I tell you what, yeah, look at this number here. Prefontaine, what a leg, but this guy right here, why 43 is important because every time he's punted the ball Chris he's been in the shadow of his own goalpost he saved his team the special team covers of the tie cats and the defense have really saved the tie cats in that first half this score could be a lot worse let's check in with Brenda Irving Greg Marshall's team's down by 10 and you had a lot of penalties in the first half of play uh, what did you tell your team at the half about that? Well, I said, you know, we did a good job of settling down in the, uh, the second part of the, uh, the half. Uh, we didn't take near as many penalties, and that's what we have to do. We can't give them opportunities. What does Danny McManus have to do differently against this uh, tough Toronto defense? We're doing a good job. I think we have to take kind of some underneath routes early. We're, we're forcing a little bit. we got to establish our running game, and we got to be patient on offense. Good luck in the second. Thank you. So essentially... The game plan for Greg Marshall, at least publicly, isn't that much different than when they started the night. Well, you know, Troy Davis only carried the ball nine times. I mean, this is only a 10-0 game. He only has 32 yards to his credit. I mean, but I still think when he got a guy of his breakaway talent, a guy that can really change the complexion of a football game, you can't get away from the original game plan. I agree with Coach Marshall. You've got to get number 32 involved in your offense. Short kick, Chuck Winters fields it at the 30. And Winters up to the 40 yard line. And again, not surprised that the kicks might be shorter tonight after the Tie Cats were burned by some kickoff returns two weeks ago. Let's check the passing chart for Damon Allen. Well, I mean, if you take eight for 17, and here's a misleading number 112 yards because. He had the big one right here, right before the end of the half, 37 yards to Talbot that led to a field goal. Other than that, these quarterbacks both have not had really superior first halves. In eight of 11 games this year that Allen played, he was over 60%, so it's surprising to see him under 50% completion in the first half. Throws a strike here, and Andre Talbot has been a productive receiver so far tonight. Ticat down on the far side. Well, let's talk about the fact that Talbot is basically their leading receiver this afternoon. He had three catches in the first half. That's his fourth one of the game. But a broken coverage. Look, look, look where the cornerback is sitting. I mean, you cannot be just as playing way too far back. There's nobody in the flat. Look at the Oshawa native who had a breakout game early in the year against Hamilton. John Avery plunging over the 50 yard line and has two or three. Renard Cox took a knee on that last play but got up and back in. He seemed to be nicked early in the first half as well but remains in the game at linebacker for the Tie Cats. Well, he is their leading tackler on this team. I mean, he gets the job done. He's played a lot of positions, he's played the halfback position, moved up to the Linebacker because he's got good speed and he's a sure-handed tackler. Second and eight. Here comes the rush. Allen backpedaling underneath Bruce and Donovan Carter with the tackle nearly knocked the ball loose. And it'll be third down. 
Well, it's a third down situation, but great hustle by Donovan Carter. First off, I mean, obviously, Damon Allen finds some extra time by avoiding the rush to complete the pass. Penetration up the middle. Johnny Scott's up there. He doesn't get blocked. He just slips, loses his footing as the old lineman does a smart thing, pushing him down. Allen delivers the ball to Arlen Bruce, who tries to spin, but good hustle by Carter to rip him down. Third down at the 45. The Argos not going to try a 52-yard field goal. And Prefontaine in to punt. East awaiting. Prefontaine angling another punt. We've got a flag down. Prefontaine has been hurt as East is down by Marius at the 14-yard line. We talked, we saw Adriano Belli with a penalty on Noel Prefontaine when he was blocking him on a return on a missed field goal early in the first quarter, taking Prefontaine out, drawing a roughing penalty. Now, look at it's over. It's over. You, you know, I got to tell you, Wayne Shaw, you can avoid that. Now, it's not harmless. Now, but the referee says if you make any contact, look, he actually puts the shoulder up there. Now, I don't care what you say. It doesn't look like much. But they know that he's got a problem. He's hurt. So he tries to give him a little shot. But once again, it's a penalty that starts off giving the Argonauts excellent field position. They were chirping at Prefontaine from the Hamilton bench. And Prefontaine gestured and will take the penalty. And the Argos will take the first down. R.J. Sauer, first catch and a first down. And we've got more flags. Uh, Damon Allen is really stretching his field horizontally from sideline to sideline. And the tie cat defenders who really played physical in the first half are sitting off right now soft. And that's allowing him to get rid of the ball quickly. But they're going to tack on additional yardage for a roughing the passer, I believe, or a late hit on Damon Allen after he delivers his football. And again, it's another big penalty. Not a small five-yarder. When you start talking 10 to 15 yards and they keep adding up, you're giving the Argonauts instant field position, and you're saying to them, you know what? You can't score for 50, so why don't we bring you down to the 20-yard line? This time, they say that Belly took Folk into Allen intentionally. But that's that's not a, I mean, that's not a penalty. If you throw no. a guy at a quarterback, that's not a penalty. So we won't put that in the lack of discipline column. Allen slides feet first, and there is a flag away from the play. You know, I'm still upset. I can't believe that. When you, go, when, you, when you get good pressure on the center, Folk, and you pick him up and you throw him at the quarterback and knock the quarterback over, how is that a rough in the quarterback? You should give your own center the penalty. Illegal formation. Toronto, no end. First down repeated. So a procedure penalty against the Argonauts, and it will be first and 15. I guess more accurately, an alignment penalty, not a procedure call. An alignment penalty, and again, it's a situation where the defense has to come up big. You heard Pinball Clemens say it was key to score the first points here in the second half. Threatening to do so, Talbot's fifth catch of the game. Inside the 10-yard line. Six on that first down pickup, and it will be second and eight to nine for the Argos. What you like about playoff games is you don't know who the hero's going to be. Number four, Andre Talbot is quickly grabbing the reins of the hero as he comes inside. Little slant pattern, fifth catch of the afternoon. Yeah, you think about Arlen Bruce and Tony Miles. Andre Talbot is a little down that depth chart. Allen to Miles incomplete. And Damon punished again. Well, Damon is on his back as he's looked and he's checked all the seams in the roof of the dome. See if there's any leaks up there. He spent a lot of the afternoon looking up at the ceiling after he delivers that football. That's a nice job of Tony Miles actually knocking the ball away from Goss. This could have been an interception that Devontae Peterson with, ah, could be a late hit. 
not many 41 year old grandfathers earn their living doing what Damon Allen's doing. Bree Fontaine in for this short field goal attempt. High snap. But they get it down and through. Argos score first in the second half. And now it's a 13 point lead. Sure is nice to have some alone time, but I wonder if anyone would like to sit and talk subs. Rush into Subway restaurants and try our tasty sweet onion chicken teriyaki sub with five grams of fat made on our fresh baked bread. Subway, eat fresh. There's only one name that boasts the brute strength of 600 foot pounds of class dominating torque. One brand with the fastest production pickup on earth with a 500 horsepower engine. One truck with the legendary Hemi that out hauls, out tows, and outperforms the competition. Dodge Ram, the one truck with the speed, strength, and power to put all the other trucks in their place. Details of participating Subway restaurants. Is that the Williams boys again? No. I think it's Canada. The new City Pepper Points MasterCard is here, and Canadians are celebrating. Every time you use the card, you'll instantly save two cents a liter at Pepper Canada. Reward yourself, all with no annual fee. Apply at Pepper Canada today. Reminder to log on to our website in the second half to cast your vote for Warrior of the Game. You decide who showed the true character of a football warrior, and yes, this show includes kickers. If Noel Prefontaine is the kicker in question, Tim Cheatwood, Mike O'Shea, a lot of candidates on the defensive side as Hamilton goes to work on offense with DJ Flick up close to the 45-yard line. Remember, this Hamilton offense, third in yards produced during the season behind only BC and Montreal. But I think the situation is such that what Coach Greg Marshall said is so true. Danny McManus has got to take what the defense gives him. Don't try and force a situation. They want to sit in a zone and give it the underneath stuff. Hey, take it at six yards to crack and just move the chains as long as you end up putting points on the board. Maybe a free down here, second and about a foot. They'll just plunge with Davis, get the first, and regroup. If it was a little closer and wide open, we might have seen McManus throw in that situation. Well, it's, it's a scenario that probably still could as we take a look at the receiving crew of the Tie Cats this year. And I, you know, we talked about Montreal's outstanding foursome. And obviously, you look at these numbers with Morielli and Amerson. I, I thought it was important to do this because nobody talks about this group. Amerson missed four games. Otherwise, he's the third man. And Morielli's in the neighborhood. This is a solid receiving core. And there's Dondre Gilliam with the rough first half, but has a first down here as the cobwebs have cleared for another weapon that Danny McManus has at his disposal. Here's how McManus has spread it around, limit, limited in the first half. Well, only 61 yards, basically, when you're looking at that kind of thing, you have to give credit to the Argo defense. They've taken away all the big play potential down, and that's where he loves to go. But even the underneath stuff, six yards. 14 for Gilliam there, first down, quick hitter. Far side, flick, another first down, and suddenly the cat offense is purring. And you talked about that board we just looked at with the four receivers, and we talk about Montreal's receivers. Remember, those guys have been together a number of years. They understand the system. This is a team that was 1-17 last year. They brought in new receivers, and I think that even, you know, makes more of a comment, more of a statement for what they've done. So Jamie Barisi, the offensive coordinator for Greg Marshall, has made some first half halftime adjustments and it's starting to open things up for Troy Davis to the 31 yard line. And this is all Troy Davis because it is intended to go between the tackles. 
by the Argos again, really messing with the offensive line as far as their gap responsibilities and causing a little confusion there. They're getting penetration, and as a result, there's nothing inside. He's got to do the rest on his own. That means he's got to bounce outside and pick up something positive, which he does. Hamilton lost five in a row after winning the first three, and then they say Troy Davis put the team on his back. Let's see if he can do that in the second half. McManus underneath. Another first down. Oh, wait, no, incomplete. Yeast could not hang on, and now a flag comes down. You know, and Yeast. I got to tell you, Chris, we talked about this. This is totally. It's a lack of discipline on the part of Craig Yeast. Every, you, you know what? You're not the only player out there. You're hurting your teammates. Not only do you not secure the catch, what would have moved the chains? You get up and push the defender. You take an objectionable conduct penalty and take yourself out of field goal range. Uh, it's just, it's, it's stupid. Let's just, let's just color like it is right there. You can't do that. You're shooting yourself out of foot. You start moving the football. And then you get up and you're, you're disgusted. Well, you should be disgusted at yourself. So if you want to hit somebody, go to the sideline, take your helmet off, and give yourself a shot in the head. But don't hit the defender because now, as you say, you're out of field goal range. Well, let's put it this way. They're going to test Jamie Borum's range that was 49, the longest during the regular season. They're yeah. going to try a 48-yarder well, here, I, but Greg Marshall didn't want to do this. Well, look who's returning. Exactly. This guy has hurt them in the past. Five return kicks this year for Levingston. So the pressure on the rookie place kicker. For the first cat points of the game, off the upright dead ball. And the only consolation is there was no Levingston return. Warren gave it a ride, but it's still 13-0. The best-selling minivan of all time just got better. Introducing the all-new 2005 Dodge Grand Caravan. Exclusively featuring available stow-and-go. Two rows of bolt flat seats with best-in-class in-floor storage. Plus, you can get adjustable overhead compartments. Fold and stow all the seats for best-in-class cargo capacity. All together making the 2005 Dodge Grand Caravan the only minivan with stow-and-go seating and storage, simply the best. Jamie Borum had plenty of leg. Well, they were questioning about it, 48 yards. He's got the distance. He played in the Vanier Cup here in 2001 with the University of Manitoba Bisons. They lost to the St. Mary's team, but look <laughs> at the fans. They can't believe it. Having a good time in the stands. That can get tough in those trenches, too. Swings it back. John Avery smothered by Joe Montford. And Jolton Joe has another big defensive play and a loss of five or six yards, maybe even more, as they spot it at the 20. Well, Joe Montford is a player who has just gotten stronger. This is a guy that, I mean, he, you're going against one of the more elusive backs in the league. Just wraps him up and golfs him, if you would, and takes him down for a loss. Marked at the 20, so it is a loss of five. Second and 15. Here's the blitz. Allen gets him away. And this one picked off. Arab and Justin. The rookie's got it. And he's back into Argo territory. Tony Miles with the tackle, but a big turnover for the Ticats. Big turnover. Again, the pressure forcing Damon Allen. We saw it in the first half. Pressure as good as a sack when you get results like this. Sheet went off the side. He knows it's coming. I got to put the ball up. I put the ball up again. Too far for the antenna receiver. Arabin Justice, who bit early in the second quarter and got beat by Talbot, makes a bit of an amendment, a bit of atonement for that. Brings it back in the middle of the football field, and for once, the Thai Cats have got good starting field position. Third CFL interception in six games for Justin. And the Thai Cats go back to work offensively. Davis underneath with O'Shea right there. They tried to use Davis as a receiver a couple of weeks ago here at Sky Dome. He caught seven, but 
marginal yardage at 27 yards. Hey, listen, if you are running an offense and you've got a guy and he's not getting the yardage on the ground, I'm telling you, you better get the ball them other ways. If that means you got to run hitch patterns, if that means you got to run screens, you got to do whatever it takes because this guy can break tackles. Davis with three there, second and seven. Quick hitter up in the air. Flick comes up with it off the fingertips of Jonathan Brown. And although it's a completion, it'll bring up third down. Well, that's the second pass that's been deflected during the football game. Michael Shea got one earlier in the football game. Great athletic ability of Jonathan Brown, who was cut once on the ground, gets up, stays with the play, gets a hand up. DJ Flick with a good play to catch it. Otherwise, I tell you, he might have had an Argonaut going the other way. Well, this time, Greg Marshall opting not to attempt a field goal. It would be from 51 yards out. We saw that Borum had the leg, but this time they'll play it conservative, try and back the Argos in their own zone. Well, you got no points. Now you got to hope you can cover it. Angled punt, Levingston. And again, the coverage has been solid. Led by veteran Rob Hitchcock tonight. Well, the marquee guys on the crew will be heading west, including my partner for what I think is going to be a really interesting game at Commonwealth. Mike Pringle and the Eskimos, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, who thought they were going to have the home game in the West Semi. I've been doing some contortionist exercises so I can get into my seat for the trip four hours <laughs> you think there's some freak shows on TV <laughs> come watch this flight you always look so comfortable in that middle seat I make a lot of friends I'm telling you that right now so the Argos start inside their 20 and they give it to number 20 Eric Shea brings him down and there's a penalty marker on the field uh, this will probably go against the Argonauts, Avery. A little look at disgust, can't believe it. But again, the Thai Cat defense doing its part, forcing this Argo offense backwards instead of forwards. First down, repeat. And Sandy Annunziata with the hole, the right guard. You know, it doesn't show on the scoreboard, but you feel momentum changing in the second well, half. Well, it's changing, but the offense of the Thai Cat still has got to take advantage of the situations. They got great field position on the Justin interception. They can't capitalize. And now the Ticat defense has to say, we can't allow a first down here. That's right. Because if they can force the punt, they'll get the ball back in good field position. Inside the 10, first and 20. And an incompletion intended for Robert Baker. Damon oh. Allen with the interception on the last series just his fifth interception of the year as they have said about Allen many times he manages a good game he manages a good game and so far what I've seen even though he got a 10 nothing lead or 13 nothing with that last field is the fact that he has overthrown a number of open receivers so there's some positives from a receiver's perspective if you're looking at the offense and you break it down but from a quarterback you'd like it to be a little sharper he has been under siege, this high-pressure Ticat defense coming again. Allen over the middle, and a one-hopper incomplete intended for Arlen Bruce, and the Ticat defense holds, and they should enjoy great field position. Well, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves in that department, considering the well, way that's right. Paul Prefontaine kicks the ball. Number one for the Argos has just been booming punts, but it's, again, a three-man rush. Montford's going to take the inside loop Johnny Scott to the outside three guys along with their, their fellow defender Tim Sheetwood and the pressure forces Allen to skip a pass to the antenna receiver does Mike Clemens give up two well, here this might be the thing I mean you've got a 13 nothing lead yeast awaiting inside the Toronto 50. Argos taking the full 20 seconds. Prefontaine, high punt. Yeast at his own 50 into backpedal 10. 
gets most of it back. However, there is nylon on the carpet after a 50-yard punt and an eight-yard return. Boy, Prefontaine something. Imagine if he wasn't hurt. Still a 13-0 Argo lead. play your way to the Grey Cup when Subway Restaurants is giving away five trips to the big game. Come in, then enter online. Plus, with any Lay's potato chip purchase, you get another chance to win from Subway. Okay, here we go. Can you find the all-star on this team? He's not the top scorer, but he's everybody's MVP. Most valuable person. A hockey volunteer. You can put your local heroes first by nominating them for the RBC Local Hockey Leaders Program. Visit rbc.com for details. RBC Insurance. First for you. Ooh, hey. That's darn pretty. Oh. Where do the Northern Lights come from, anyway? Well, where are from Canada? I mean, what causes them? I don't know. Long-lasting, super-bright LED lights from home hardware use 80% less electricity. So they save you energy and money. Oh, oh my. Energy-saving LED lights from $7.99 at Home Hardware. Holiday decorating help is close to home. Devontae Peterson, who had the controversial clothesline tackle of Keith Stokes about a month ago in a critical Hamilton victory, called on the illegal block here. He's locked right up with Ray Marius. It's right at the end, right here. He's going to push him from behind, and as soon as he hits him from behind, the back 3-5 will throw the nylon. So it's a 47-yard start for the Ticats. Another flag as Troy Davis turns to midfield. But this one's coming back. Well, you talked earlier, Chris, Labor Day, 23 penalties, 240-something yards against the Ticats. I guess they are trying to beat that record today. Saw a penalty on the illegal block by Devontae Peterson in the first play. They run offensively. They get a nice yardage out of it, and then they get a hold. And this is why your old coach, Cal Murphy, doesn't believe in conceding safeties. Because look, at they got a 50-yard punt, a couple of penalties. Now that Hamilton, still without a point on the board, back at their own 37. McManus looking at first to 20. Short pass underneath. Davis brought down immediately, and it's only three yards. Plus three yards, and again, the Argo defense sits back and lets the underneath be open. First thing Danny Mac sees is the opening. Dumps it off. Mike Fletcher shook up a little bit. They can ill afford to, to lose number two. Chuck Winters will check in. But they're getting great depth from the linebackers. There's Kevin Ivan, Michael Shea, bringing down the receiver after a short game. And the stout Argo defense urging their faithful to make noise. And McManus swooped back at the 33-yard line. Second sack of the game for the Argo defense. And this Hamilton offense surrendered only 10 all year. Well, there was a lot of talk about the fact they said, you know what, we've got the number one rusher. We've only given up 10 quarterback sacks. We're a little miffed. We only got one all-star in Dave Hack. Well, today, the Argo defenders are exposing this offense line because they're forcing Danny Mack to hold the football. And as a result, they're getting pressure and sacks on 14. Eric England has both. He had only four all year. Orem punting. Bruce receiving it. And Sandy Beveridge down quickly to make the immediate tackle. Yes, sir, we got the hat, is it? Samsung introduces another breakthrough in DLP design.
the award-winning pedestal TV with DLP. Style meets performance. Thirty-seven thousand eight hundred thirty-five on hand for this Eastern semifinal, and they're watching the Argonaut defense dominate, and the Toronto offense has done just enough. Matt Pets bringing down a Avery. One twenty-one to go, third quarter. Well, Matt Pets just comes and running a double tight. The Argonauts are. Trying to spread out, spread out the defense, but Pence comes around the backside and chases down John Avery. Bring him down for a loss. Come back with taking this game. It's a loss of two. It'll be second and 12. Four receivers to the wide side. That's the direction Allen rolls, and Joe Bonford tracks him down. Exhibit of why this guy is one of the finest in the Canadian Football League. Well, you just think, and you know, you got a guy that's still got pretty good elusiveness and Damon Allen to get to the outside. But 53 just closes the ground so quickly, and he's so strong. Once he gets a handful of number nine's jersey, it's all over as he throws Damon Allen to the ground, and they take a big loss. Two losses, two successive plays. Forcing Prefontaine on to get the punt. Third sack of the game for Hamilton. They had 36 in their last 10 regular season games. And again, Prefontaine trying to kick them out of trouble. And using as much of the clock as he can. Yeast has to backpedal yet again. Formed and taken down. Williamson Strachinski, part of that double blue special teams unit that has been special tonight. Now remember, Strachinski is the long snapper. And he's the first guy. They'll go to any meeting, they'll say, the snapper snaps the football, and you head up the football, son. You get down there, you get your nose on the football. And that's exactly what 45 does. Just comes down, follows the football, stays in his proper lane. Makes the play. Pinball Clements told us yesterday he wanted to win the special teams battle by 14 points. Even if it's no points on the board tonight, the Argos are probably making their coach awfully happy with their play. Here's McManus. The whole day. Flag down. On. Completion. Greg East. On what should have been the final play of the quarter, but there is a flag on the play. Well, they're going to call Jonathan Woodward the left tackle. Eric England is a man possessed out there. Number 95. He gets around the corner and Woodward can only put the old lasso around the neck. Tries to hide it from the official. He throws the flag. He's right at the bottom. Gets the hand around the neck. Official right behind Danny McManus out of view. Just throws the nylon and That'll cost him some more real estate. 12 penalties, 143 yards charged against the Tiger Cats. First and 20, and Davis shakes a tackle and gets three or four extra yards. Close to the 35. We're at three-quarter time at Skydome. 13-0 Argos. The CFL on CBC, brought to you by Dodge and your Dodge retailers. Grab life by the horn. And by Subway Restaurants. Subway, eat fresh.
Marlon Bruce with the lone touchdown in this game. 13-0 Argos. Let's check the numbers, 345 minutes. Well, I don't think much has changed. I mean, it's still a defensive struggle out there. As everybody's trying to find a way to get their offense to open up a little bit. And that's evidence, obviously, 9 and 10 first downs. Take a look at this, though. If there's a stat here that stands out more than anything, Hamilton, 12 penalties, 143 yards. They've shot themselves the time and time again. Second and 14. Danny McMahon is deep. Incomplete intended for Dondra Gilliam. Well, I tell you what, in a game like this, when you're down by 13, Chris, Dondra Gilliam, you may not be able to catch this football, but do not give up on the route. Do not give up on the pattern. I, I kind of don't like when a receiver stops. He figures I still can't get it. So I, look, he just kind of pulls up. You got to be aggressive. I don't care if there's 20 guys there. You want to win this football game? You got to be the guy that maybe has to make the play. Get the football, son. You wonder about the impact of that enormous hit he took in the first half by Antonius Bonner that left him on the field shaken for quite some time. Forum to punt it away. Not as good a kick. Fielded on the bounce by Bruce. Up to the 38. We saw Arlen Bruce on the sidelines talking to Andre Risen. Not in the Argo lineup, but also subbing as a receiver coach. As we check Damon Allen on the evening. And the big strike to Arlen Bruce the third. And throws a couple little passes. I like the fact that he utilized the entire field. And how about the game that Andre Talbot has had? There's RJ Sear. Nice move by Sauer. But there's the man, number four. Leads the catching. Five receptions for this Argonaut receiving group. And a Hamilton defense has to shut them up now. Palmer with the catch. Up across midfield, so there's the other Canuck receiver. Well, there's the other Canadian Smurf. These guys aren't the tallest guys, 5'10", but I'll tell you what, they're valuable. They find openings in the zone. They just get down there, and look at the effort to go down and catch that football. Damon Allen throwing that ball down and away where only Michael Palmer can come up with that catch. Burlington Needle. Michael Palmer, 15 catches during the regular season. Argo first down into Hamilton territory, and that play doesn't get off. Argo receivers were across the line, and some motion at the line. Well, that's a, that was just Chad Folk right, right there. Procedure. Toronto 65. Well, they're going to give it to Sanzi and Nunziata, but that's just Damon Allen pulls away. He anticipates getting his snap count on, on the first audible or the first sound, and as he pulls away, he doesn't get the football. So everybody kind of, even though it's amazing when you're an offensive lineman and you're at that guard position, you're watching the guy in front of you, you can actually, from the side of your view, still see the quarterback. So it's first and 15. Back at the 53. Allen, Bruce, spins away. Allen Bruce, down to the 40, has a first down. In a big game, and that's just the biggest game, baby, because I tell you what, you got two sets of suitcases, one on each sideline, and the loser packs theirs and goes home. Arlen Bruce has come to play. He's bigger and stronger since so coming back from the NFL. Now look at he gets hit by two guys, refuses to go down, little shake and bake. It's plays like that that really fire up your team. 18 yards for Bruce. Argos. Looking for the killer instinct now. Nothing there as Avery falls forward. Well, I think when Avery got that handoff, he looked up and he saw about five or six tie cats. And I, I, I think he kind of got a little turf toe, got caught in the turf, went down hard. He's going to kind of leave the game. I kind of tripped up there. So Avery to one sidelines. Belly comes out. Johnny Scott back in. Belly heated up about it, too. I don't think he wanted to come out. Second and 11. Six receivers set. Allen 
takes off. And he'll be pulled down by the middle linebacker, Baron Chia at the 40. And now Pinball Clements has a decision. Well, I think we've seen the strength of Noel Prefontaine's leg already, but what a job by the rookie linebacker, Augustin Baron Chia. This kid has got a future. The mold made the mold of Mike O'Shea. Look at the closing speed and the wrap up. This kid's got a nice future in this league, I'm telling you right now. Cut last year at Ty Cat Camp. Greg Marshall told us yesterday he wondered about even bringing him back, and then he got the word from some McMaster coaches who were guest coaches two years ago that the kid was worth a second look. So here we go. And that's another reason you have Canadian university coaches in the CFL, because they know the talent at the university level. 47 yard attempt by Prefontaine. And his great night continues. Wow. It's a 16 point Argo lead. On the toe of Noel Prefontaine. Pontiac drivers don't break the law. They just get out of the way a lot better. Introducing Pontiac Wave. Now this is nice. Not a thing to think about. Except maybe soundproofing. And plumbing. Ah, what the heck? Why not renovate the whole bathroom? You're a handy woman. You have vision. Make it happen with Rona, the how-to people. Counting down the seconds till I'm with you again. Without you, I'm so empty. Oh, tell me. Introducing Tim Horton's new beef stew in an oven fresh bread bowl. Hearty seasoned beef, garden vegetables, and rich gravy. With a coffee and donut, just $5.59. Just a reminder to log on to our website in the second half and cast your vote for Warrior of the Game. Yes, a kicker is very much in the picture here today. You decide who showed the true character. Eric England, a couple of sacks of the Warriors and a lot of guys on the defensive side of the football are candidates and the Thai Cats now into crunch time where they need to put points on the board. Well they need to put points on the board you can see they're still not going to stray from their game plan because obviously we are going to still run Troy Davis. Chris I wondered about the Argo defense down the stretch. Look at the numbers they allowed in the last three games but they have responded tonight. In fact, in those three games, they gave it more touchdowns than the first 15 games. But here's Davis outside, and he steps out at the 46-yard line. Well, R.J. Amerson's going to be down. He got caught up in some traffic. Dondre Gilliam and R.J. Amerson came back to help block the spring. Troy Davis to the outside, and I think that R.J. Amerson is not going to be Staying in the football game as a result. He comes back and makes a play, and he gets caught. He's trying to block Clifford Ivory. And Dondre Gilliam, who's blocking Adrian Smith into him. And once again, Arch Jamerson has been battling that left knee injury. Caught off guard, as so often happens. Pascal Sharon gets outside. And it's a run, pick up a first down. 19 yards for Davis. He has 75 on the night. First down in Argo territory, back to Davis. So they stick to the ground game, down to the 40, seven more. Clock running, approaching the five minute mark of the fourth quarter. Well, it's a scenario right now where they're faking the outside, just doing a quick hitters. 
and Troy Davis is busting it up, but he's picking up seven, eight yards. Remember the clock now, with 9.50 and ticking is not your friend if you're a tie cat. Quick hitter, Flick flagged down, and Jordan Younger there to make sure Flick wasn't going anywhere. But this is the CFL, and although this hasn't been a characteristic CFL night, offside Toronto the call. Remember last week in BC, when Saskatchewan trailed by 18, and in two minutes, they were up in the game. And that's, and that's it. I mean, don't turn the sets off. I mean, I'm telling you right Outside, now, this is like... Toronto 95, first down. Well, Eric Eagley with the penalty, but what has to happen right now, I, you have to put some points on the board. Tight Cats must put some sort of points on the board on this drive. They have just one play over 20 yards tonight. McManus wants more now to D.J. Flick. And it's knocked down by the fine first-year corner, Jordan Younger. We've had the luxury of doing a number of Argo games. If there's a guy in the second there that I think is a star in this league, Jordan Younger is him. I mean, this kid is just... A wonderful cover guy down the field. He's step for step. Look how he plays his football. He's got one eye. He knows where the receiver is. And then he goes up, plays that football. But what good corners do is they make sure that if either they don't come up the interception, they don't allow the receiver to catch that football. It's getting loud here at Skydo. As the Tie Cats. Approach the line, second and ten. McManus almost picked off Michael Fletcher. Intended for Amerson back in. A third down, and Jamie Borum will have to come out to attempt the Tie Cats first points of the game. Well. They just read the eyes. This is simply following the eyesight of Danny McManus. Michael Fletcher read the eyes, went to the side, got a good jump on that football, and should have come up with a great interception that would again once eliminate another opportunity for the Tigers with some points on the board. From the 42-yard line, he hit the upright from 48. Just missed the up right there. Warmingston in the end zone. There's a block and an open lane out. And he will step out. And may have gotten himself off the hook, but it looked like he was going to concede the single. Nearly stopped inside the five, but Bashar Livingston gets the Argos out of trouble. If you think all batteries are the same, consider this. When the Rocky Mountain Rescue Group needs light to save lives, they trust Duracell. Out there or right here at home. Duracell, trusted everywhere. Introducing Spectra 5. The only car in its class with six standard airbags. Packed with cool standard features and Canada's best ownership coverage, including free oil changes for life. Kia Spectra 5. For only $229 a month, you can love one this much. I give you my word. Keeping our word is standard. Standard life. Sunday afternoon, the West Semi. Henry Burris and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders meet the Eskimos at Commonwealth Stadium, 3.30 Eastern. The pregame show 
Moss versus Burris for the right to go to BC Place and a date with Wally Buono's Lions in the West Final. The Montreal Alouettes await the winner of this Eastern Semi. Controlled so far by the Argos. John Avery straight ahead for a couple, but Chris, you didn't really like Livingston's decision even though he did get out near the 20. No, I think, you know, you, you got the lead, you basically give up the point, you take it at the point of a field goal attempt, which is 42. Look at the split. That's a smart move of the tight end to line up three yards wider than the tackle. That puts Joe Monford three yards wider from the ball carrier. Second and seven. Carl Coulter wants his hands on the football as soon as possible. Allen underneath. Arlen Bruce flagged down. And Bruce plunging ahead for the first down. And they'll tack on a roughing the passer penalty. And they'll tack on more uh, as Tim Cheatwood just kicked the flag in disgust. Well, this is when you lose composure right here. It's an emotional game. You get the penalty. You may not agree with it, but you're never going to win that battle with the referee. He's not going to put Major the flag foul. back and say, oh, sorry, Mr. Cheatwood. Roughing the quarterback. Hamilton 49. Objectionable conduct. Hamilton 49. First down. He's up at the top. He's working against field goal. The ball is delivered. Uh, yeah, and that's this. You know, you can't throw a flag like that. I mean, I really, you know, I don't blame him, but you can't do this. That is frustrating. This is a football game. Hey, this is a playoff game. It's a playoff game, and I tell you, that is just, you can't throw the flag. He pulled up. We've seen a number nine. I'm surprised Greg Marshall's not over there. But uh, this is, I mean, let the people play. Let them win. Don't let the officials decide. I mean, you got instant field possession. Bad call resulted 30 yards. First down for the Argos near midfield. And the Argos call a timeout. You know, we talk about this team, Chris, we say they've taken some in undisciplined penalties. Penalties that have hurt them. But you gotta also let the people play. And, and, and when Chiwa comes around, he pulls up. Now, if he cranked Damon Allen, yeah, you throw the flag. He had one arm on his shoulder pads. And that was it. You can't throw a flag. There's such a thing as contact and no contact, even when you're making contact with the quarterback if that makes sense to you because it just, uh, it, it just frustrates you. He's over the top. He's working against Fugel. He pulls up. Now he pulls up, puts one arm on, and he just slides down. He doesn't drag him down. He lets his hands go. See, this, you I, see the hand come off? He pulls the hand off of Damon Allen. I thought maybe they assumed he'd gone for the head, but clearly off the shoulder. Allen has to pull it down. Now delivers incomplete. Andre Talbot. And now we get another late flag. And again, who's making the call? It's not the official on the sideline who's facing the receiver. It's the guy behind the line of scrimmage. Major foul. Unnecessary roughness. Hamilton 49. Cheatwood again. Well, that's why he threw the flag then. We and thought they threw it on the interference on Talbot. I was wondering how can a guy in the back of the line of scrimmage throw a flag down the field, but Cheatwood has lost it now. And but and Greg Marshall just pulled well, you, Cheatwood out. You, you've got to get him out. I mean, now he takes a swipe at Jude St. John, 66. They got double team on him. He's going to go around. He gets flushed outside. He can't make the tackle. Now as he goes back, you know, Jude St. John gives him a shot. That's what you can do. The play's still going on. He retaliates. He always catches the retaliator. Bad penalty. 188 yards in penalties. More flags as Avery works forward. Less than seven minutes left on the clock. And I, and I gotta say, I mean, 188 pounds. And I talked about the thing that Tim Sheetwood is one heck of a football player. Let's not forget the fact. But you you know, you're judged as a football player as your Outside. contribution to your football team. And that five. means on First the play the and during the play. Now you may not make the play, but don't hurt your team by taking unnecessary penalty. Yeah, you got a bad call against you on the rough and the passer. But you got to suck it up, get back in the lineup, and make sure next time that you're in the quarterback before he throws the football. But to go after an old lineman, and you're not going to hurt, you know, St. John by hitting him in the head. The guy's 350 pounds. Got to hit him with a jackhammer. 
First and 15 after the Argos went offside. Here comes Montford. Allen straight ahead. And he'll slide inside the 35. And it will be second and four. Second and four, but a, a nice job of using the clock. Look at as that opened the, the great divide in the middle of the offensive line. And Damon Allen sees it, takes advantage as the old safe slide. Picks up five yards, puts him in a second and five situation. And again, they're in field goal range. Trying to put this one on ice with under six to go. Allen will swing it. That's Tony Miles. And he will lose yards back at the 39. Bernard Cox was there. Last shutout in playoff history, 1976. Hamilton defeating Montreal. Ticats have not been shut out since 79 when they were blanked by the Argos in a regular season game, 25 to nothing. Again, I like the fact that Damon Allen utilizing all his players, spreading the ball around. A little reverse by Miles, tossed the ball to him, see if he can make something happen in open field. He's brought down. But they used up some of the clock again, and it really is becoming an enemy of the tie catch with 539 left. The storybook season may be having its final chapter written here for the tie cats. Prefontaine looking to angle that. Well, too much on that one. It'll go to Goss in the end zone. And he's thinking about bringing it out. Instead, it's a point, and it's 17 nothing. And now, Hamilton needs three scores. This Christmas, check the Canadian Tire Flyer to find great gift ideas for the car nut who likes to speed things up. Like the Mastercraft Crank Speed Ratchet. This may look like an ordinary ratchet, but there's nothing ordinary about it. It tightens and loosens fasteners in very tight spaces quickly because you can twist it like a screwdriver. Just keep twisting back and forth. It turns continuously one way as you crank both ways. That means you're tightening or loosening with no wasted motion. No sweep required and it's fast. You can also bend the handle for even greater speed. But the Mastercraft Crank Speed Ratchet is just getting warmed up. Watch this. Extend the shaft, bend the handle, and see how the crank speed ratchet performs much faster than ordinary ratchets. Now that was fast. The Mastercraft Crank Speed Ratchet Kit, only $39.99. A great gift idea for any do-it-yourselfer, only at Canadian Tire. Canadian Club, now on special at the LCBO. The new 170 horsepower Corolla XRS. Whoa. Once you're into it, you're really into it. Argo's trying to extend, including preseason games, their unbeaten streak to 13 against the Tiger Cats, and here's how it's unfolded so far tonight. Boy, I tell you, take a look at Prefontaine, injured, playing, tough man role today, three field goals, what a punt average, 51 yards a punt. And maybe the biggest story at all, of all, this Argonaut defense that well, has righted the ship and looks like it's ready for Anthony Calvillo well, and the Alouettes. You know what, and that, you gotta give credit to Rich Dubler, the defensive coordinator who's just done a masterful job of out scheming Jamie Barisi, the offensive coordinator for the Tie Cats right now. They've made great adjustments in stopping the run game, not making Troy Davis a factor. DJ Flick, hurry up offense, has a first down for Hamilton. With Rich Stubler on the sidelines has to love the way it's 
unfolded here tonight. Danny McManus downfield. Mike Morielli holds on. A spectacular catch and a 17-yard gain. Will that be the lift the Tie Cats need to finally put some points on the board? Mike Morielli going down the field, sacrificing the body, making the great catch, leaving his feet, knowing he's going to get a shot, holds on to the football. Kenny Wheat with the smack. But Morielli with the grab. 32-year-old McMaster graduate Morielli and Kenny Wheaton is down. After the tackle, Danny McManus has been held to 135 yards passing on the night after that completion by Morielli. Less than four minutes to go. So long, ordinary toothbrush. The Oral-B dental experts have created cleaning technology like nothing else on earth. The new Oral-B Professional Care 8000. It pulsates and oscillates to loosen plaque and sweep it away. Teeth get twice as clean and dramatically whiter. Gums get stronger. Your whole mouth gets healthier. You'll never go back to an ordinary brush again. The new Oral-B Professional Care 8000. Brush like a dentist. Just restarted play with a pass in the flat to DJ Flick. Close to nine yards for the Eastern All-Star wideout. Danny McManus has to make things happen in a hurry now. Second and a yard. And they'll give it to Davis. And it opened up on the right side momentarily. Davis thought he'd get more. He has the first down. Bonner the stop. Well, Clifford Ivory came in like a heat-seeking missile, number 13. And it's all stuffed up the middle. He tries to break outside, make something happen. But 13 just comes flying underneath and takes out the legs of Troy Davis, who slams the ball down. A little frustration starting to set in. Troy Davis. Under three minutes to go. McManus, Fleck. First one misses, to DJ Fleck. Brought down by Antonius Bonner. Another first down as the three-minute warning is given to the benches here in the fourth quarter of the Eastern Final. Seven. The all-new 2005 Hyundai Tucson with Canada's best warranty. Perfect for whatever, whenever. This Christmas, check the Canadian Tire Flyer to find great gift ideas for the do-it-yourselfer who likes to do things right. Like the Mastercraft Circular Saw with Hawkeye Laser Technology from Canadian Tire. It's part of a new line of Mastercraft Hawkeye Laser Power Tools. A laser? Awesome. Just make your mark, line up the laser, and cut. They help make every cut more precise. There's a miter saw, great for mistake-free cuts on expensive materials. See, it's a perfect fit. Even a jigsaw and a wet tile saw. That looks so easy. And it's so awesome. It is. Great cutting tools, laser technology. Awesome laser technology. Why don't you and your awesome laser get started on the kitchen? The Mastercraft Circular Saw, just $59.99. Part of the line of Mastercraft Power Cutting Tools with Hawkeye Laser Technology. A great gift idea for any do-it-yourselfer. Only at Canadian Tire. Ticats threatening to score here late fourth quarter. As we check Chris Walby's Gillette game notes. Well, we talked about offensively the big fight between Jamie Barisi and Rich Stubler. Obviously, Stubler, who is undefeated coming into this match from the red corner, is still looks like he might be victorious. That's the blue corner. Okay, the blue corner. I'll let you go with that. No pressure here. It's all over. They had three sacks. They've done a good job on defense. They just haven't had much help from their offense. But it's not done yet. And McMahon is trying to push it over in a hurry. Looks to the end zone. It's over now. Kenny Wheaton's got it. Kenny Wheaton's still going. Kenny Wheaton's gone. Booked the trip to Montreal. Touchdown, Toronto.
defensive play by the double blue defense. Well, it's a situation where Danny McManus knew he had to put seven on the board. You can't settle for a field goal. You have to have a touchdown. This ball is just under throw. He's trying to hit Morielli in the end zone instead of doing the rainbow throw, trying to drop it in. Tries to fire a line drive. Kenny Wheaton sees it, picks it up. Look at that entourage all the way down for a touchdown. Unofficially 118 yards, which would be the longest interception return in CFL playoff history. Prefontaine, the extra point, and Michael Clements is one third the way through his goal for a three game win streak in November. Danny Mack take another look as he sits back there and tries to thread the needle only to have Kenny Wheaton who was shook up a little earlier in the drive on a hit to Mike Morielli come up with his biggest play and Chris as you say 118 yards later with the rest of his teammates escorting him to the end zone I believe that is the final nail as now it is 24 to 0 with 224 left on the clock. He might not be the highest profile member of that secondary, but he might be the hardest hitter, and he just provided the knockout blow. Well, he started with a hit on Mike Morreale, and he finished it by hitting the whole entire tie cat team where it hurts on the scoreboard. made it hurt even more as McManus looked for a flag. As you take a look at Marcus Brady warming up. Well, we talked about late. this yesterday, uh, Chris. Regardless of this score, it's not going to change the fact that it was an amazing Hamilton story this year. Oh, absolutely. And I think the guy that deserves a lot of credit, two people, Bob Young, the owner, who has made it fun to go watch a football game in Hamilton again. And Greg Marshall, you know what? He's going to open a door up for a lot of University Canadian coaches. He's coming here and done a stand-up outstanding job turning this team around from 1-17 to playoff contenders. And this team is only going to get better as the years go on. Greg Marshall telling Danny McManus the night has done great year, but it's not ending the way he had hoped. We can confirm now it's officially a 116-yard touchdown on the interception return by Kenny Wheaton, a playoff record. The guys in the truck have the previous record from 97. I don't think Saskatchewan Rough Rider fans want to see this one again as they look forward to Sunday in Edmonton. But Kenny Wheaton tonight on 116 yards and telling the guys how he did it as we have an injured Argo on the field. 218 left on the clock. And you know what, Chris? Getting back to the tie Cats and the, and the team they pulled together, bringing over Belly and some of the other players, watching Joe Monfort re return to the form that he had, picking up guys like Chris Martin and Goss in the secondary. I mean, they've got all the pieces. Jamie Borum, a good kicker with a bright future. They've got the foundation they've got set. The foundation, they've got a receiving core, the best running back in the league. And you know, it's funny, 41-year-old Damon Allen, 39-year-old Danny McManus, and really not much discussion about it being the final game for either of the quarterbacks who both, for the most part, are leaning towards a return next year. So Marcus Brady, the former Argo in, and Troy Davis isn't going to give up. Well, Troy Davis is going to get a lot of yards running the football right now because the Argos are in a prevent. They're sitting back deep, dropping everything. All their linebackers are down about 10 yards back, taking away the pass. You know, if you want to run the football, we're going to give you those 10, 12-yard chunks. But again, 
the clock is going to be working against you. Here's Brady. Look one way. He'll take off the other. And Marcus Brady scampers out. Inside the 40-yard line, he got a couple of starts on the season and came in in week four against Toronto when McManus was knocked out of the game. Troy Davis over 100 yards on the evening, by the way. And remember, Marcus Brady in last year's Eastern Final when he came off the bench. Three all, touchdown passes. almost pulled it out. So it will be for the third consecutive year. Toronto and Montreal in the Eastern Final. Uh, and I don't think that's any task uh, that's envied by anyone. Of course, you know, you want to go in there, you know, but you got to go into the big O, playing a team led by number 13, Anthony Cabillo, who has put out, they have just put out some tremendous numbers the last couple of weeks. 50 points against Ottawa, 58 against these Argos. Mind you, they rested 10 starters. Now we can talk about the controversy too as well. The fans were after this team saying, why would you sit your starters? And he said, we want to be healthy because this is the biggest game. Well, they've answered that now. And apparently the fans understood because they came out over 37,000 strong tonight. Brady, quick hit, flick. And he is close to another first down. Chris, wrap up your Argo Gillette game notes. Well, on offense, we said for them to be successful, Damon to Miles and Avery be a dangerous combo. 180 yards passing, Miles 18 receiving yards, Avery 32 misleading, but they did just enough to put some points on the board. Arlen Bruce really had a big game. And on defense, TNT, the dynamite man, Troy Davis, they had to try and neutralize him. He had 105 rushing yards, all bid, when they really didn't matter much. Now, where was your stuff about stopping Andre Talbot, who had his best game of the year? Five well, catches, you know, we talked about yards. that. That's what's so great about playoffs. You never know who's the guy that's going to be the hero. He came off. He's led this receiver crew in the Argos with five catches. And, you know, that just makes you feel like I'm the man. I mean, they always talk about the rises from the NFL. They talk about Arlen Bruce and then R.J. Soward. And then there's Talbot saying, hey, buddy, you see my game? Not bad. First down for Marcus Brady. Pumps and escapes. And is able to swivel past Mike O'Shea inside the 20. Let's close the book on Danny McManus's Eastern semi. A little better than 50% throwing the football. Another 56 yards. But obviously, the thing that's haunted him the whole year. There it is again, number two, two interceptions. Obviously, the one big one returned for a touchdown by Kenny Wheat. And nothing deep. The longest play was 22 yards. That was a run by Amerson. Flick another short pass. I think it's fair to say, though, Chris, as we look ahead to next week, the Argos have to be this solid on defense, and you'd believe better on offense if they're going to beat Montreal. Well, I think that's, you know, that you don't have to be a rocket science scientist to see that, because right now you definitely have to do that. We take a look at the head-to-head -head matches this season, Toronto versus Montreal. Aside from that, let's get rid of this one because this one really has no bearing on it. That's the one that everybody sat out. We know that they have to deal through for a ton of yards to get a 6,000. But they always match up well against the Alouettes. Our first down as Brady looks like he's trying to change the play in the din and there's the little option toss Troy Davis down to the 10 yard line with 86 seconds on the clock closed captioning is brought to you by 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. the new Pontiac G6 launching this fall Sharon Livingston savoring the moment, wondering if the shutout will hold as Brady rolls right. Can't find anybody. Now in the end zone, incomplete. Tunkara and Gilliam in the same neighborhood with plenty of traffic. And the 
there, and the tight cat receivers may have blocked well, the ball yeah, loose. I, I think they uh, they decided to play a little defender receiver themselves as Dondre Gilliam gets caught up with Tonkara in the end zone, and the end result is again a situation where nobody could come up with the reception that would put some points on the board. It looks like Gilliam has it until, and you're right, his receiver and the other receiver runs him over. Third down and five as the Argos try to preserve the shutout. And that's thrown away, and these fans will respond as it's turned over on downs. Well, it you have to give credit where credit's due, Chris. And Red Stubler and this defensive 12 that played really have played about as good a football game as I've seen them play all year. And you see Coach Clements on the field talking about Damon Allen saying, going down, don't take any chance at the football, kill the clock. But they just took away the run. They had to take away the run. That was their first priority. Stop Troy Davis. They did that. As you say, they took away the long pass. They made everything that Danny did complete underneath, and they wrapped up, and they tackled very well. And, and you know what? i got to bring up that one point, because if there was one criticism on this defense in weeks past, it was their shoddy tackling. A team that really hadn't played well since Thanksgiving. Avery straight ahead. Well, this is the defense that turned it up a notch, did some different things than they're used to doing. Ran a lot of twisting motions with the inside defensive lineman, a lot of stunts. Michael Shea, Kevin Ivan. What's up, Roy Brown? Train your pants, baby. What's good? Michael Shea probably already thinking about next Sunday. Jonathan Brown whipping everybody into a final bit of frenzy. Avery nailed as Joe Montford's going to go down the way he plays every play. And the warrior of the game is a well-deserved deserving kicker. What can you say about this guy playing on a possibly torn oblique muscle? He punted the heck out of the ball. He got tangled up with Adriano Belli, and he kicked the field goals that he needed. Roughed up, maybe a little bit of an acting job. He's the warrior of the game. Warrior of the game, brought to you by Rona, the how-to people, proudly Canadian. was a great prayer said free Fontaine could be the key to the game absolutely well, I was a little surprised he came up with that uh, all the hairspray he's got I know it's gonna have Sean Millington gnashing his teeth for a while <laughs> oh that was very astute he made the right call and that was the question mark coming into the football game and boy he sure responded in a big way well-deserved choice for Warrior of the Game. Yards, Toronto number eight, 15-yard penalty, first down. Mike Crum shaken up on the play. And it's the only thing now. The Argos want to get out unscathed. It looks like they will. And a class veteran, Dan McManus, congratulating his teammates because, put it in perspective, 1-17 and to 9-8-1 in the first playoff berth in three years. I remember there's other guys on this team. There's Carl Coulter. He's hoping to get another kick at the cat. He would, for lack of a better term. He's up there. He's hoping to play another year. And, uh, you know, these guys are getting a little long in the tooth, but they still feel that they can contribute. Danny Max says, I'll come back if, Carl, you come back. And that's a class act, just walking over, talking to all the players, all the new players. You know, we heard earlier this week that Carl Coulter had a little in-house session with all the young guys talking about don't be satisfied just to be at the playoff game. Don't be satisfied with the fact we turned the season around from last year. We got to go out there hungry and 
try and take it to the next level. They didn't do that today, but I think, as you said earlier, great foundation for the future. There's Brady swinging it out. Kojo Adu with the ball and a flag on the play. Seconds remaining before this one's in the books. Uh, roughing the passer. That shutout uh, is precarious right now as they march it down to the 14 yard line of the Argonauts. And with 19 seconds, you got a couple, three downs to possibly put some points in the end zone, which would uh, kind of take away from the stellar effort this defensive crew has put together today. Another shot, putting points on the board. No, no. Flick yeah. out of bounds at the eight-yard line. 15 seconds to go. Again, Sunday, Saskatchewan at Edmonton. Burris versus Moss. Two young guys still trying to make their playoff mark. McManus and Allen already have, both winning three Grey Cups. And Damon Allen. Focusing on number four. Second down, Brady. Over the middle, Mike Morreale. Won't get there, dropped it. And are they going to mark it? Yes, at the two for the Tie Cats. Well, how fitting. Third down and two, and this is what you don't want to see. Their stellar youngster, Jonathan Brown, a little beat up right there, going down. You hate to lose any player that quality in the last minute of a football game, knowing full well you're going to need him at full strength against that tough Montreal offense next week. Final play of the Eastern Semi, and the Argos dig in, trying to preserve the shutout. Brady with time into the end zone, touchdown. So Mike Morreale, a Hamilton boy and a former Argo, Make sure they don't leave empty handed. And Greg Marshall even could muster a smile that at least they crack through. Well, no quit. No quit. Still some fight left in the dog. Dog got kicked a couple times, but. Or the cat. Or the cat. Well, this, yeah, I didn't want to use a cat again because you know it's going to be like, stop using the cat terminology. We understand that. So I thought I'd use the dog. If, you know, I like to do all breeds. Maybe a parrot next time. I don't know. And now they'll go for two. And Bunch Steen, uh, time count violation. There's no infraction on the play. The umpire was setting the ball. We're going to play the play the uh, convert from the five. Clock ran down, but the official just spotting the ball properly. Again, Mike Clement says a uh, longer week to prepare for the Eastern Final on this Friday night. Nine days away, the showdown in Montreal. Waiting for two, but plenty of heat. And it's incomplete. And it will go in the books as a 24-6 Toronto victory in the Eastern semifinal. And for the third straight year, we're ready for Toronto and Montreal in the Eastern final. Here's Brenda Irving. Harlan Bruce with that huge first touchdown of the game. How important was it to come out strong like that? It's big. You know, we had to set the tone first half. You know, as soon as we come out, you could see guys was fired up. We just come, we had to come out and execute, and that's what we did. Look ahead to Montreal. What are some of the challenges they pose for this team? You know what? We got nine days to look at that. You know, we're going to just go and film and sharpen up what we got and then take care of what we need to take care of next week. You know, there was a lot of criticism on this team because they rested 10 starters. How did the fresh legs help this week? It helped a lot. You know, Coach Clemens, you know, players play, coaches coach, and Coach Clemens made a great decision for the guys to rest, and we came out victorious today. Congratulations.
Well, let's go upstairs now to Chris Cuthbert. Congratulations, Arlen. Uh, of course, sir. Thank you, Brenda. Marlon Bruce with that touchdown catch from Damon Allen. At 41 years of age, conferring with Kibus Reed, the defensive coordinator of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Kenny Wheaton and company savoring this one. They're on to Montreal in the Eastern Final after a 24-6 victory tonight. Canadian Club, now on special. Canadian Club, now on special at the LCBO. One is tempted to say the Argonauts embarrassed Hamilton. The bottom line is the Ticats embarrassed themselves with a lack of discipline and dumb penalties. Just a reminder, tomorrow afternoon, live coverage of the Royal Winter Fair from here in Toronto. Join Terry Leibel, Scott Russell, and Elliot Friedman live at 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific. We all head west now to Edmonton. We'll be at Commonwealth Stadium on Sunday afternoon, 3.30 Eastern, 1.30 Mountain for the pregame show as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders take on the Edmonton Eskimos. Again here in Toronto tonight, the Toronto Argonauts have defeated the Hamilton Ticats by a score of 24-6. And once again, Toronto will advance to the Eastern Final, which is a week from Sunday against the Alouettes at Olympic Stadium in Montreal. No pre Maintain the difference. The Argonauts defeat Danny Mack and the Ticats. For all of us, we'll see you Sunday from Edmonton. CBC Sports, Canada's Olympic Network.